In this video, you'll learn about albuterol. We'll break down albuterol's mechanism of action, the possible side effects for it, and what you, as the nurse or nursing student, will be assessing for. Pharmacology can be challenging to learn in nursing school, right? So we are going to break it down super simple for you, my friend, step by step, so that you can finally understand it and really start critically thinking about it. And if you need more help with learning pharmacology in nursing school, be sure to download this free pharmacology sheet sheet that we have for you that walks you through how to learn pharmacology faster, step by step. Now the link is down below in the description for you to check that out. Now I'm going to pass you on over to our lead nurse, Nicole, who's going to walk you through all of this. Hit that subscribe button and click the notification bell. Let's dive in. So today we're going to talk about albuterol. The generic name albuterol and the trade names are Pro-Air, Pro-Vental, and Ventolin. Albuterol's pharmacologic class is a beta-2 adrenergic agonist and the therapeutic class is a bronchodilator. Now albuterol's indications or what it's usually given for are breathing difficulties such as wheezing, shortness of breath, cough, and chest tightness that can be associated with asthma or COPD, which is chronic obstructive pulmonary disease. It can also be given as a preventative to patients who have difficulty breathing with exercise to help them improve their breathing during exercise. The mechanism of action of albuterol is that it binds to beta-2 adrenergic receptors, which work within the lungs and cause them to relax or expand, also known as bronchodilation. This smooth muscle relaxation of the airways help to, helps to improve that gas exchange. There's also some effect on the beta-1 receptors, which are in the heart. The therapeutic effect of all of this is that albuterol helps to relax the airways causing them to expand, and this in turn improves breathing. Some side effects you're gonna to wanna to watch out for is that albuterol can cause some nervousness, a tremor, headache, and hyperactivity, because even though it, only, it mainly binds to those beta-2 receptor sites, it also has some effect on the beta-1 receptor sites, and those are responsible for that fight or flight response. You might also get some chest pain, arrhythmias, palpitations, tachycardia, and hypertension, again, because even though it mainly binds to the beta-2, it's also activating that beta-1, that fight-or-flight response, which increases your heart rate and gets you ready to act by increasing your heart rate, increasing your blood pressure. So those can all be some side effects that we see as well. Hypokalemia can also happen because of the release and activation of those adrenergic receptor sites. It can cause an intracellular shift of potassium into the cells, which leaves less potassium in the bloodstream, causing hypokalemia. Dry mouth, sore throat, or thrush, which basically is just white sore patches found in the mouth, can also occur due to the irritation of the oral mucus lining because of how albuterol is taken. Your nursing assessment for albuterol, you're going to want to make sure you monitor their vital signs, especially their heart rate, respiratory rate, and blood pressure. Watch for any widening pulse pressure, so that's when the diastolic and systolic um, are very far apart. So if your diastolic is 60 and your systolic is 130, that's too far apart. So you want to watch for any of that. Monitor their respiratory status. Assess their lung sounds, respiratory rate, and assess for any signs of labored breathing. You're also going to want to monitor their potassium levels and if therapy is increased acutely. So we want to watch out for that hypokalemia. It's usually more common in an asthma exacerbation, and we just want to keep a close eye on that if we acutely increase their albuterol intake. Some major contraindications for using albuterol would be patients who have hypertension, hypokalemia, cardiovascular disease, diabetes, glaucoma, or a seizure disorder. Patient education when your patient is taking albuterol is that you want to make sure they take it exactly as prescribed and do not increase their dosage without consulting a healthcare provider. This could cause a paradoxical bronchospasm, which could leave them worse than they were before. 
educate your patient to rinse their mouth out with water after use to help prevent that dry mouth and thrush the white patches and sores in the mouth that we were talking about. Be sure to have your patient use their inhaler correctly or it may not work as effectively. It's always a good idea to have your patient um, teach your patient how to use the inhaler and then have them show you how they would use it before the first time they use it just to make sure they're doing it correctly. If your patient's using albuterol as a preventative, have them take it 15 to 30 minutes before exercise to get the maximum effectiveness from the medication. Again, some nursing considerations you're going to want to watch out for with albuterol is that if there is an overuse, it may lead to tolerance, bronchospasm, or hypokalemia. Beta blockers can also interfere with the therapeutic effects of this because they're essentially blocking the effects of the stimulation of those beta sites. So monitor blood pressure very closely and watch for widening pulse pressure. And that is albuterol. If you want to deep dive into all of the other medications besides albuterol that you need to learn in nursing school, do not miss out on the medication database that we have for you inside the Nursing SOS membership community. Now there's three ways that I can help you more through nursing school. Number one, download this free cheat sheet that walks you through the step-by-step -step process for learning medications faster. Don't miss out on that. And be sure to check out our nursing school pharmacology box that comes with over 120 flashcards with all of the must know key information for all the medications that you have to learn in nursing school. Plus, you'll also get a medication reference guide to take to clinical, super handy resource for you that has just the must know information that you need to know for all the medications that you will be learning. It's a really nice, quick reference guide for you to easily take to clinical and find exactly what you need, exactly when you need it. And of course, if you want me to hold your hand throughout your nursing school journey, do not miss out on joining the Nursing SOS membership community, my friend. You are going to love it. it is filled with step-by-step -step nursing lectures to help you understand everything faster for nursing school. You'll be more prepared for your exams. Now, there's also a full medications database inside the Nursing SOS membership community for you. The links to all of those things are in the description down below. Now, if you like this video, make sure to hit that like button, leave a comment below to, of course, let me know that you loved it. I love chatting with you and share it with your friends. And of course, click that subscribe button and hit the notification bell so you never miss a video. Now click on one of these videos right over here so you can keep rocking nursing school. And as always, my friend, go become the nurse that God created only you to be. And I'll see you next time on the Nursing School Show. Take care. Bye-bye.